Hello world and welcome back to an official episode of Surveillance Reports after a nice long break. Today's report is number 22 covering news from, get ready, August 4th through October 3rd, so about two months. Because of the long time period and to prevent this being a two hour report, I obviously cut out some of the smaller stories, so there will be less detail today to make sure this doesn't go too long, though it's still probably going to be pretty long. Today's report is featuring our Amazon page. If you shop on Amazon, maybe a pixel for flashing Calyx or Graphene OS, a privacy screen protector, a privacy book, or any of the other cool things listed on our storefront, feel free to use our Amazon affiliate link before making a purchase. It can be for anything. So if you really wanna give back, just bookmark our link before you buy anything from Amazon and that will help us at no cost to you. Let's get into the report starting with companies. After two months, the company that came under the most scrutiny was, unsurprisingly, Facebook. It begins with a lawsuit filed in San Francisco that claims Instagram, a Facebook-owned company, was intentionally activating user cameras without permission. This was possible thanks to the new iOS 14 dots that warn when the mic and camera are activated. Instagram has, of course, called this a bug. Now, if you're thinking, whatever, it's just me browsing through Instagram, well, if you ever shared a photo on Instagram in a DM, then deleted it, a security researcher has some news for you. As Instagram retained photos and private messages after the user deleted them. Instagram says it takes 90 days to be properly removed. The only issue is the researcher found his data after a year, and this was after he asked them to delete it. If you're still thinking, eh, whatever, I never shared anything in DMs, well, it's not over because Instagram faces another lawsuit saying they are illegally harvesting the biometric data of their users through facial recognition. That is a lawsuit in progress also in California. If you are that guy, you're still thinking, well, I don't even use Instagram. I hope you also don't use a OnePlus device because OnePlus has deviated from their notorious simple and clean ROM to now include Facebook services built in that cannot be removed. Users found these Facebook services to be using some data in the background, which is concerning considering you have no idea what data is being sent and it's Facebook, like, come on. OnePlus has confirmed they will be continuing this practice. TikTok is the next company, and honestly, it was just a lot of hoopla for months over who is the best American sugar daddy to buy them out. Um, there were several dates they were supposed to be banned, and it never really happened, and to finally settle their privacy concerns with TikTok, God forbid, Oracle and Walmart have won partial ownership of the company. Two companies totally not known for good privacy. Walmart actually implements Bluetooth tracking on its customers within its stores to serve them advertisements after the fact. Yeah. Another fun piece to this, ByteDance, the Chinese part of TikTok, still owns 80% of the company. I'll say it before and I'll say it again, people. You're absolutely out of your mind if you think the TikTok ban was ever about national security. I said it from day one. Go back and watch the surveillance reports. People criticize me for saying this. And now after months, I hope you wake up and see the light that this was always about politics and the US flexing its power on a rival nation. Companies like Google and Facebook suffer very similar privacy issues as TikTok and nothing ever happens to them. What should happen is the US enacts privacy regulations for their citizens that applies to any company invading a user's privacy, regardless of what country the company's headquarters resides. If TikTok was successfully banned, they should have been banned for the right reasons, which would have also got Facebook and a plethora of other US companies banned as well. Everyone should be held accountable, not just Chinese companies. Zoom is another big name nowadays thanks to COVID, and back in August, Zoom was sued by a consumer group for that one time they lied about having end-to-end -end encryption, which they never had. We made a video covering all of Zoom's issues, including this one, so check that out below. To add on to those issues, a researcher from DEF CON, a hacking conference, typed up a really nice list of identified vulnerabilities in August. I recommend you check out the sources. Normally we'd cover that, but it's a long surveillance report as is. Before moving on, let's play a little game. What next major tech company will we cover next? Hmm? 
if you guessed Amazon, you are correct. A German news article breaks down some worrying details about how Amazon manages its employees. Supposedly, they have a team that provides tactical intelligence and surveillance products for its own executive floors to track trade unionists, activist groups, and quote, hostile politicians. This brings up several concerns regarding Amazon's ability to silence those who may speak against their empire, we'll call it. To worsen these concerns, the former NSA chief Keith Alexander has joined Amazon's board of directors, the same person who served as the public face of US data collection during the Snowden leaks in 2013. Spooky stuff. Our next subcategory of companies is cars. New Toyotas will upload data to Amazon Web Services in order to create custom insurance plans based on how customers drive. We've already seen data-driven, no pun intended, insurance with several privacy issues in the past, and now it's time for it to hit the road. Okay, two puns intended. Um, there has been similar discussions of Tesla implementing something similar since Tesla has their own insurance as well as obviously all of the data for their own cars, all under the same user account. Um, speaking of Tesla, uh, a hacker gained control over the entire Tesla fleet back in 2017 by being able to mimic Tesla vehicles contacting the mothership. This was patched quickly and was one of the reasons for Tesla's recent moves the last few years in beefing up the security of their cars. To be honest, it's kind of a miracle. <laughs> um, all Tesla's major vulnerabilities so far were found in safe environments, um, but that will not be the case forever. It's really only a matter of time before something happens in the real world. Tesla lucked out again after an employee refused to accept a bribe to install ransomware against the company. I'm telling you people, Tesla is really lucking out. They're playing with fire here. Speaking of Fire, Mozilla, the creator of Firefox, has had quite a lot of changes the last couple months, some of which we've already covered on our YouTube channel, so check that out if you haven't already. In short, Mozilla laid off a quarter of their staff, 250 people, including their security team, sparking a lot of discussion regarding the future of the company, especially since between 2009 and 2019, despite their top executives' pay going up by 400%, their usage went down by 85%. This got people thinking their Google search deal, which is how Mozilla makes 90% of their money, was in jeopardy. But it was reestablished for another three years shortly after the layoffs, so they're still on Google's payroll. Mozilla has said they want to refocus their priorities. In doing so, put greater emphasis on their new VPN and killed Firefox Send officially, their privacy-based file sharing service. To rub damage in the wound, the very hyped up new Firefox for Android was kind of a disaster. Although it brought speed to the table, it removed most extension support, which was a huge perk of Firefox for Android. It was littered with bugs, Mozilla removed the About Config menu, which is where advanced users customize their browser, and they removed a few other features, which angered customers. Firefox employees had none of it, with Emily going on Twitter, literally flipping off, not just Firefox users, but all mobile browser users. That is super professional. On the bright side, the nightly version of the Android browser brings back proper add-on support, so people are hopeful this will make a comeback. The other major browser company, Brave, on the other hand, had mostly positive news the last couple months. They finally re-released their browser sync functionality to version 2, which was very much anticipated for months after its sudden death. Um, this now includes bookmarks, passwords, autofill data, history, open tabs, extensions, themes, settings, and apps. So it's even better than it used to be, and I'm a huge fan of the old um, Brave Sync. I love how it doesn't utilize an account. Um, I still have to verify if that's how that's still done now, but that's how it used to be done, and I hope they still kept that up. Brave has also added their real-world implementation of BAT allowing you to buy Brave merchandise with Bat, so it's not just used to tip other people. They also are on the verge of breaking 20 million active users following their upward trend. Brave seems to still be doing well despite some of those recent scandals, which were covered in their own video on YouTube. Links are below. To finish out company news, a private firm bought Ancestry and all of its DNA data. So, if you trusted Ancestry with all of your DNA in the past, I hope you trust this new company too. Two lessons here, people. One, don't give your DNA to a random company, please. And two, there is nothing stopping companies in the US from transferring ownership of data in the event of a bankruptcy 
or an ownership change. In fact, companies like Amazon and most others have clauses in their privacy policies telling you that they will sell or transfer your data during a bankruptcy or ownership change. The company you trust today may be the company you despise tomorrow. So think about that next time you create an account with your personal information. Research is our next category. And for the interest of time, we won't dive too much into the technical details of each story. As always, the sources are below if you're interested in something specifically. A new attack discovered by researchers abused weak implementation of the LTE mobile network to spy on users' phone calls. It's pretty complex, though interesting to read into. On a similar note, a new technique from security researchers has been developed to detect stingrays, a tool typically used by law enforcement to impersonate cell towers and capture information about any phone in its range, something that's heavily criticized as being unlawful. So good job. There was a security flaw found in Grindr, the gay dating and social network that allowed anyone to hijack user accounts. This was possible because the password reset page was leaking password reset tokens to the browser, so anyone could gain access by just knowing the email tied to the account. This has now been fixed. More flaws were found in, surprise, the Amazon Alexa. Several vulnerabilities were discovered that could silently install apps on a user's Alexa account, get a list of all installed apps on the account, remove apps, get the user's voice history, and get their personal information. Your reminder that the I in IoT stands for insecure, and the S in IoT stands for secure. Windows 10 was the next culprit, as it was discovered specially crafted Windows 10 themes and packs could be used to steal Windows account credentials from users. This is one I would really read if you can because it's pretty darn cool. Mozilla did some research and confirmed that your web history within your browser can be used to uniquely identify who you are. This was originally studied in 2012 and they have confirmed that this is still the case in 2020. To pop back at Mozilla though, an Android LAN-based vulnerability was found in their Android application running version 68 and below that allowed attacks to be performed on users connected to the same network, so someone without your interaction could load URLs inside your browser. It has been fixed in newer versions of Firefox, so now you get to decide if it's worth upgrading to the new infamous Firefox for Android. I would recommend biting that bullet or just switching to a better browser for Android. Um, Tor Browser and Bromite are fantastic. The last research article is positive, as every facial recognition algorithm saw increases in error rates once masks came into the picture. In one example, there was an error rate of 0.6% without masks and a 34.5% with masks. Um, this is overall just awesome news for us privacy advocates in the short term. Though remember, there will be more invasive ways of tracking people, and this is a constant cat and mouse game. Lastly, I wanted to mention that DEF CON, the hacking conference, happened remotely and is all free to watch on YouTube. There are literally hundreds of hours of very interesting talks relating to everything we talk about. So I highly recommend going to their YouTube channel and watching any that interest you, since it's not common for them to publish everything online for free. As you may imagine, politics has been pretty crazy lately, and the privacy and security world was victim to this as well. To the point, I actually had to make categories for the politics section and subcategories, which isn't common for, for politics. We're gonna start with negative domestic US spying with a subcategory of just location data. In early August, the US Customs and Border Protection paid half a million dollars to a company that sells location data harvested from apps installed on people's phones. This is the same company the IRS used back in June to find suspects based on their location data. Please keep in mind, none of this was done with a warrant or oversight. To continue, another company, Anomaly6, utilizes an SDK within third-party applications to collect location data. The fun part is they're a federal contractor that provides this data to several branches of the US government and private sector clients. The cherry on top, Anomaly6 isn't listed in any public spending contracts, and those contracts are unclassified but confidential. So. Yeah, isn't it fun when you, you as a user who tries to protect what they have is accused of hiding something, when the government consistently hides dirt like this? Hypocrisy at its finest. 
To continue the subcategory, as the US government was busy telling US citizens how much of a danger TikTok is because of Chinese spying, documents show that the US Secret Service paid to get Americans' location data. Again, without a warrant. Funny enough, the company behind this, Babel Street, was the company the founders of Anomaly 6, the one we just talked about, used to work for. On a positive note, can we please give a thumbs up to Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon, who is the only politician who constantly talks about and acts to stop this nonsense? If you're in Oregon, you did good voting for this guy. The next subcategory of negative domestic US spying is facial recognition. The CEO of Clearview AI, the scummy AI company we've talked about a lot in the past, um, they scrape every image on social media platforms like Facebook. So if you ever uploaded your face to Facebook, you are inside of this Clearview AI database, meaning hypothetically, where you walk on the street can be directly tied together with your identity and digital life in an instant. Well, Clearview AI has confirmed they are working with over 2,400 police agencies who are using its facial recognition software. It's been used now to identify protesters in Miami and New York, and they are now working with ICE. This is an eerily similar technology utilized by China in their surveillance state. So I want you to really think about how most things we criticize the Chinese surveillance state for, we do many of them as well. This doesn't justify what China does, and I'm not defending them, but it does add perspective on how the US is implementing similar technology. Over in San Diego, there were smart streetlights installed to save money and create opportunities back in 2017, and that's what they were originally for. In 2018, though, a murder happened and a police officer realized a smart camera had a perfect angle. So they used the cameras. Ever since then, they've been increasing the rate at which they access these cameras, um, having been used up to 175 times in the first year and a half of police use. All, of course, with no oversight. The original intent of the cameras has slowly faded as well since they were supposed to integrate with applications, and now they are pretty much just surveillance tools, which likely, very soon, will implement facial recognition technology. Now, if you are a full believer that the government has your best interest in mind 24-7, which is very naive, but let's just go with it, there are still several concerns over who has access to that data and how it's stored. A story that proved this just last week was the Department of Homeland Security admitted its facial recognition photos were hacked and released on the dark web. This included travelers' faces, license plates, and care information, and the DHS originally claimed that there was no leak whatsoever, so they lied. Almost 200,000 images were stolen. The final subcategory of negative domestic US spying is just kind of miscellaneous. Uh, first, Apple gave the FBI access to the iCloud account of a protester who was accused of setting a police car on fire. That's your story. Um, just a nice reminder that iCloud is not end-to-end -end encrypted and you should never count on a company to defend you. Over in California, lawmakers have asked how they make $50 million a year by selling driver's data. Very interesting question, which we'll probably not get an answer to until we bump into a mysterious California data breach four years from now. Homeland Security has confirmed that the agency can obtain device data at US borders, including your phone's location history, social media information, and photos and videos you take. It's actually a lot more than that too, so check out the source. It includes pretty much everything on your phone. Uh, to make matters worse, if you're an immigrant, get ready because the US and Donnie Trump want to move forward with collecting everything they can about immigrants. This includes their biometric data like iris scans, palm and voice prints, facial recognition images, and DNA. Not only does this give a scary amount of control over people, but there's no telling how this information may be used in the future, as well as who will have access to it. I want to remind people that the German census was used by Hitler in 1933 to track down who was Jewish before the Holocaust. And here in the US, we did the same thing with the Japanese in the 40s before we put them in internment camps. The census is just a few questions that's enough to single out an entire demographic. Imagine what can be done with the DNA of every single immigrant. Iris scanning, facial recognition, and everything else that tells exactly who you are as a person. People. This is scary stuff, and even if you have full trust in your government today, what happens when the power shifts to someone you don't trust? Keep that in mind. Let's move on to positive domestic US spying, which is the more positive side of things. First, Portland has passed a ban on facial recognition in stores, banks, restaurants, and more, which is 
Awesome. This is the same ban that Amazon spent $24,000 to try and kill. And finally, the best news. A court has ruled that the NSA phone snooping program that swept up details of billions of American phone calls was illegal and unconstitutional. There is a win right there, folks. That finishes US news. And as much as we complain about US problems, China is still mostly worse, at least as of today. China has begun blocking all encrypted HTTPS traffic that uses TLS 1.3 and ESNI. This is all done using their great firewall. They're obviously doing this because it's giving the government problems in their surveillance state. Um, and that reminds me, doesn't the US wanna ban encryption used in things like Signal because they struggle to get into that? Huh. Yeah, um, the Earn It Act, <laughs> that's progressing really nicely actually, just being introduced into the House of Representatives yesterday. So if you don't want the US to become like China anytime soon, which we seem to be moving to every day, check out the EFF's website and do what you can to prevent the Earn It Act from progressing any further. Finally, let's finish politics with some more civilized countries. First, a UK court has found that police use of facial recognition violates human rights. This hasn't led to an outright ban of the technology, but it heavily restricts its uses and what can be done with it. And our last political article. Ireland has sent Facebook a preliminary order to stop transferring user data from the EU to the US. This comes just a few months after the EU Court of Justice ruled the data transfer between the EU and the US doesn't adequately protect European citizens' privacy. It's nice to know that some countries actually give a damn about their citizens, which makes me very jealous, but it is what it is, and we have to fight our battles wherever we live. Let's go into free and open source software news. Microsoft has launched a new website showing off how open source they can be. It's really funny actually, they took the time to like pat themselves on the back for every little thing. Like, hey, did you know our new site is built by the Ruby open source project, Jekyll? Just saying. <laughs> but yeah, this is kind of Microsoft's plan for trying to make themselves appear more open and accepting of open source. Um, and this actually extended into something else called the Open Source Security Foundation, a collaborative effort between the Linux Foundation, Google, Microsoft, GitHub, and more to try and improve the security of open source projects. And if you're skeptical and you really don't believe Microsoft is looking to change, they might've been accidental, but you know, the Windows XP source code just leaked on 4chan, meaning you can go ahead and look into exactly how the OS works. Now that's open source right there. On to an actual open source community. Let's talk Linux. Linux 5.8 has launched and Linus Torvalds, the creator of the Linux kernel, has called it one of the biggest releases of all time. Debian, a Linux distro, also turned 27 back in August. So I hope you got to celebrate Debian Day if you caught that. The last few open source things to cover start with Have I Been Pwned, the breach notification service, which is now open source. Threema. A secure messenger has also gone open source, making it a much more trusted option for many people. The last piece of news is unfortunately pretty sad as the main NVIDIAS instance will be shut down, a YouTube front end, as well as the privacy Firefox extension Umatrix, which has ceased development. May they both rest in peace. Finally, people, we're almost done. We made it through this crazy surveillance support to the final category, the misfits. First, Remember how Twitter got hacked a couple months ago? Well, during the court hearing for the 17-year-old, they got Zoom-bombed by someone who played an ass-eating porn video. I think this story kind of speaks for itself. Next up, a former Uber executive was charged with paying hush money to conceal a massive Uber data breach back in 2016. For those wondering how much it was, it was $100,000. Tony Abbott, the former Australian Prime Minister, had his phone number and passport details obtained by a hacker after posting a picture of his boarding pass on Instagram. For those of you who don't know, never ever post your boarding pass in a public place like social media. It's not hard to figure out a lot more information about you from that alone. A document filed in Arizona against Google shows that company employees knew and discussed how confusing and misleading the Google privacy settings are which I find hilarious since Google always claims how simple and easy it is to opt out of basic things. And 
just when you thought that smart toasters, smart toilets, and whatever else is out there was too much and humans couldn't possibly evolve past this, Ring decided, yes, we can. So they made a security camera drone that flies inside your house. Yes, because most people in the world put security cameras inside their houses. <laughs> Why would they want to be outside? This reminds me of Kingdom Hearts 1, where like they give you the ability to fly and Sora can finally fly for the first time, but you're stuck inside a little tiny ship and you can just fly inside the little rooms. It's like, okay, man. I can tell you right now, Ring will tell you it does like one really cool thing and I'm sure all of you people out there are gonna go buy it because it's so cool and I'm just gonna sit back in my IoT free home and watch everyone perish when their cat snatches this thing out of the air, it catches fire and your whole house burned to sound, but the worst part of it is your Amazon Alexa burned down too. Speaking of Ring, the FBI is now worried that Ring and other doorbell cameras could tip off homeowners before police searches. Like, no shit. The hypocrisy is second to none considering the police uses these same cameras in an unauthorized fashion to track people without the owners even being aware. The next story is awful, so get ready. Um, I warned people months ago that hospital security was a big deal and it would one day lead to lives being lost. Well, it finally happened. Um, over in Germany, a woman was forced to have to go to a different city for treatment because the hospital who was treating her suffered a ransomware attack. She died and it was partially attributed to this attack. Some people obviously didn't get the memo because 10 days later, the healthcare giant UHS in the US was hit by a ransomware attack as well. You have to be kind of a sick, twisted evil to act against healthcare, but people are going to do it. So the sooner we take this seriously, the less lives we'll lose. Razer, the gaming company, had a data leak that exposed 100,000 customers to phishing and fraud. Can we get an F in the chats? And finally, our last story. Edward Snowden was on the Joe Rogan show for a second time a couple weeks ago, so go check that out on YouTube or listen to the podcast, wherever you can listen to this. Isn't it just Spotify nowadays? I don't know. Who knows? Um, if you have a spare two and a half hours, I highly recommend it. Snowden's awesome. He always has great stuff to say. On that note, um, I'm sure you've heard about it, but if you haven't, a new documentary on Netflix uh, called The Social Dilemma was released criticizing the mental effects of social media and their psychological manipulation. So if you're looking for a movie to watch, that's probably my newest recommendation. And Techler community, that is the end of SR22, the longest surveillance report to date, I think. Thank you all for being patient as we've been prioritizing other projects the last couple months. It's been pretty crazy on our ends, but Things are going awesome. Um, we're hard at work back here to try and juggle everything at once. So yeah, we're, we're doing our best. Once again, this report is featuring our Amazon affiliate link. So if you want to support our work for no extra money on your end, save that affiliate link somewhere and use it next time you buy something on Amazon. We also have a storefront with a list of some really neat things there that you may be interested in. Uh, another thank you to our patrons. We just hit 70 patrons for the first time ever. So close to 100 patrons. Um, it just starts at a dollar a month. So if you have a dollar to spare, come on, let's try to hit that 100 as soon as we can. That's it for this report. Thank you again for listening and have a great rest of your day.